watching Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Only on Shade 45. Y'all better tune in or these guys is coming at you. Turn it up. Yes, one of the most powerful pillars in our community. Always been a person who wasn't afraid to speak her mind. And it just so happened that her thoughts could benefit the whole of us. Mm hmm Mm. which is something I always appreciated about her. And then when she went into the literary world, I thought, wow, man, what a great example of someone who could transcend uh, what we do here in our in our music culture mm -hmm. and still take her talents and, and, and her dedication to help uplift. She's here with us today. This isn't her first time. No. Not at all. <laughs> She's our sister. She's our friend. She's a guiding light. The one and only Sister Soldier. Yes. Hey, sister Soldier. <laughs> Good morning. Not Thank you for that intro. I like that. Oh, no. You know, it's <laughs> that just was very nice. It's just how I feel about you. I mean, you and I have never had a chance to just sit down and, and break bread, break bread for, uh, you know, over a table of food or anything. Mm. But, uh, but I've always... Um, through your through your speakings and your actions, always felt um, like we were kindred spirits uh, from day one. I've always learned from you, so. Well, thank you so much. Now, I remember you from the Bay. Yeah, from the Bay. <laughs> Whenever oh. I would come through on the tour, <laughs> yes. KML, yeah, 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 KML. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. See, I don't know. I always bring up past because everybody don't remember everything the way you do. But right. absolutely, from the Bay. No, I remember in the nineties. You right? was large over there on the West Coast. Tell them about it, Sister oh, Soldier. Was. Soldier, he why was. you get him them. started? <laughs> tell, they don't believe it. They he think, was the man over there. I know that. I, I know that. You yeah. know. I was, I was just, just standing in the wings observing. Oh, there you go. Uh, how you been? I've been good. I've been really, really well. Really well. Yes. Really? I've been uh, steeped in a world of literature, you know, just writing, uh -huh. pushing my pen, as I call it. Pushing your pen. That's and, right. And you, you, you write great novels. Thank you. <laughs> you know, in a moment of silence, Midnight 3 is your new edition. Yes. Right? Um, Midnight, this is a reoccurring character that you, you, you continue to, to build on. Why, why is that? What, is, who, what does Midnight represent? Well... The, the ladies love Midnight. They do. <laughs> and the men admire mm -hmm. Midnight. If mm -hmm. you look on the back, you see the quotes I got here. Yeah. I got a quote from um, Hussein Abdallah from the, that plays on the Kansas City Chiefs, the NFL. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he bigs up Midnight as well. And I got one from Sean Diddy and mm -hmm. Jada Pinkett. So, you know, they love Midnight. And I love Midnight. And uh -huh. I love writing the character mm -hmm. because I'm writing in a male voice. So that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. As a writer, I want to have an intellectual and emotional and spiritual challenge, you know, mm -hmm. because if the writer's bored, then the reader's going to be bored. Mm -hmm. Right. But this book right here, yes. I'm just calling <laughs> this pure thunder. This is thunder. Ooh. <laughs> thunder. Intrigued. Thunder. In oh, other thunder. Words, oh, thunder. Thunder. Okay. Okay. Like it's a thriller, an mm -hmm. action adventure in stores today, uh -huh. and Thank you can also download it. So, um, you know, a moment of silence, midnight three, everything that's going on right now in the streets, yeah. in the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. uh, this character experiences it. And one thing I've been saying is a lot of us don't think about the power of unity, the power of sisterhood, mm -hmm. brotherhood, mm -hmm. the power of our community uh, until it's too late. Yeah. So for this character, Midnight, it's not until he's chained, his, his his hands are cuffed, his ankles are cuffed, his ankles are chained to his to his to his wrists, mm -hmm. and he's chained to the next man that's chained to the next man. That's the time where the the thought that he should have been part of a brotherhood came to mind. Right. But before that, mm -hmm. you know, when we are all comfortable and moving in the society before the incident occurs that 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 gets us swept up into the system we don't realize the need for unity or the power of unity mm -hmm. if we are all enemies to one another you yeah, know yeah. then that's no good we mm -hmm. saw a, a great example of that recently mm -hmm. you know on the campus of the university of missouri yes right have you been following that story yes i have what are your thoughts about these football players that protested what's going on in justice and racial inequality on that campus and Listen, you have no idea how powerful it is yeah. when the athletes take a stand, when the athletes say, no, I'm more than a gladiator. I'm more than a tight titan. I have a culture. I have a consciousness. Mm -hmm. 
I stand for freedom. I stand for justice. And I was born here in the United States of America, and I want equal justice under the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to be comfortable on my campus, whether I got financial aid or whether I paid, (laughs) whether I paid to come here because Mm -hmm. I should because I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. So it's a powerful thing. And I think ultimately they may become an, an, an example for other brothers and sisters that are in the national leagues, the yeah. NBA, the NFL, you know, the W. Uh, NBA, uh, yeah. yeah. I think that it might be, uh, uh, people might see that it is okay mm-hmm. in, in urgent situations for you to defend yourself and your people. Yeah. And not just be a song or a game, mm. you know, but be so much more than that for entertainers as well. Sister Soldier. Um, what I liked about it too, they found a way to affect the uh, economics of that university. That's correct. Which I think had a big part of, you know, the president stepping down. I'm sure somebody came down on his neck and said, "We about to lose a million dollars, <laughs> dog." You know, you got to listen. You, you, you got to yeah. listen. Yeah, um, but eighty-three million dollars annually. Yes. Right. So we're talking big money, mm-hmm. but a lot of us don't know how much we're worth, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's right. why when they push us in an inferior position, we don't fight back. Mm. We think that we are just supposed to be quiet and follow the orders, and you know, uh, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But when people threaten your safety based on your race and nothing else. Not based on something you did or something that you deserve or people threaten your children. You have to take a stand Mm -hmm. and you have to know your value. So they knew, look, we're making 83 million dollars for this university every year. This guy's making a half a million dollars as the president. uh, But if you can count, (laughs) (laughs) there's some disparity in those Mm -hmm. figures, you know, so. I understand why they had he had to uh, resign. Sister Soldier is here. A moment of silence. Midnight Three is the book available right now. If you wish to speak with her, 888-742-3345. Give us a call. Sway in the morning. Woo! Sister Soldier's here. She is. Sister Soldier is here. Y'all heard Chuck D? That Ooh. boy is bad. Chuck D is the truth. <laughs> I'm the number one public enemy fan, I'm, I'm telling you. And I know it's strange to be a fan when I was part of it, but... Yeah. I just think that Chuck is so dope. Yeah. Do, <laughs> no, it's true. Do, I do. You have like uh, one of those definitive moments being around Chuck D and Public Enemy that, you know, you had to stop and look around and go, wow, I can't believe I'm here. I'm experiencing this with these people. Do you have you have one you could share with us? Oh, Something my God. Else? I probably could make a documentary. I haven't really spoken about that. But, you know, uh, it was interesting being with Public Enemy because I... Uh, when I first met Chuck, he said that I was living a life that he was rhyming about, mm. you know, because I was an activist in the community. I was working mm-hmm. with homeless children of homeless families and, mm-hmm. you know, doing all of the community education type of thing. So I thought he dug that. Um, and I admired him so much because I thought here's a person who uh, has such a high intelligence, mm-hmm. but he was able to uh, put it in music and still make it rhythmic and the and the production was powerful and mm-hmm. yeah. I admired him a lot. I think uh it was always a kind of situation where uh uh people looked up to him and people looked up to me and the two of us together kind of just made the room go quiet. Mm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Like, yeah. we had a lot of moments like mm-hmm. that where, you know, uh people were like, okay, well what do we do with Chuck D and Sister Soldier, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in the same room, on the same platform. Mm-hmm. So one time we were going to do a show at the Apollo and uh, the whole band had a meeting. And that was the topic. What What is Soldier going to do <laughs> on the stage? <laughs> Where are we going to put her and what is she going to do and what is she going to wear? And it was really it was funny to me because I'm yep. like sitting in the room with 10 guys mm-hmm. and myself. And they're trying to figure out and they're thinking like it's a chess game. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I, um, I felt like, well, you know, I didn't want to be a problem. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be an asset. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a compliment to the band. So I was like uh, not as seen yeah. as anybody else in Public Enemy mm-hmm. during the time period that I was with, with them. Because mm-hmm. it was just, you know, a, mm-hmm. a kind of brief time period. But that was all right with me because I was also a fan. 
Wow. And I thought he was doing the damn thing anyway. No doubt. You know? Sister mm. Soldier. Yeah. I have a question since we're on the subject of music. A concern that some artists have, and I would love your thoughts on, um, Tyrese and K. Michelle, and you know they do R&B music, okay. and they've expressed how a lot of their most soulful songs don't get picked up by a lot of stations, don't get a lot of love by the media, mm. but then you'll have a Sam Smith or an Adele who are like glorified for their music, and they think it's because it looks like an anomaly since they're white. Right. And because it's Tyrese and K. Michelle, a lot of suits in the entertainment industry say, oh, that's not going to work. That's not popular. Why don't you do a trap spin on your music? Right, right, right. So how do you feel about that? Like, are different artists being glorified just because of their skin color? Well, the bottom line is um, I'm a historian, right? Mm -hmm. So th this is nothing new, you know? It's like we always put down the most soulful music and it catches on and other people love it as they should because it moves the soul. And then other artists imitate what we do. Mm -hmm. And because they are seen as being more mainstream, uh, more marketable, you know, then they get promoted uh, much more fervently than we do. So this is like, this is nothing new. It's always been like that. Right. You know, or we'll make a song and it'll just be crazy soulful and then they'll come out with their version and their version will sell more copies. But, you know, the soul and the experience and the history and the feeling, yeah. you know, originated with us. Yeah. So I guess it gets confusing because I'm wondering, OK, have I been brainwashed where maybe I do genuinely feel like Adele's song is better than K. Michelle's? Like if I did not know what their skin color was. You know right. what I mean? Like, how oh, do you... No, I mean, it, I don't think there's something wrong with people liking Adele's music mm -hmm. uh, or feeling Adele's music. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think there are two different topics. Mm -hmm. One has to do with the inner workings of the business, mm -hmm. you know, behind the curtain, uh, what, what we're marketing, how much money we're putting behind it, and so on and so forth. I can say the same thing in the book world. Yeah. Okay? I'm saying... I'm writing the novels that's moving the culture, that's moving the soul. And when I look at the television, which is not often, mm -hmm. I see other writers borrowing, mm -hmm. which is copyright infringement, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> from my novels. Right. I wrote A Deeper Love Inside, the Porsche Santiago story. It was uh, uh, about a, a young uh, sister of Winter Santiago being locked up in the, in the, in, uh, as a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's part of a gang of girls that escape. Uh, from um, from a prison institution, okay. uh, and they're of all different race racial backgrounds. And while I was traveling, writing my next book, this book that's out now out today, Midnight uh, Three. While I was traveling, my nieces were calling me, Auntie. I'm watching, you know, Orange is the New Black, and they're, they're doing your joint like Ooh. on the TV, wow. like <laughs> you know, like wow. and 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 I get calls all the time about from people. Not just people related to me saying, oh, Sister Soldier, you know how you wrote this and you wrote that. I saw this on this station, mm. on a cable or on the network. So then what's your next move when that happens? So like with the case of Orange is New Black, do you set a meeting? Uh, well, it depends on the artist. Like for me, yeah. uh, I am really not interested in spending a lot of time in court with attorneys, yeah. suing people. Uh, one thing my husband says to me, he says, Soldier, he says, we just create. Mm -hmm. And we just keep creating. Mm -hmm. He said, they wait and they keep copying and we keep creating. Mm -hmm. They can't catch up to us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Because we are creative. We are the original creators of it. So I'm not interested in, you know, just suing everybody every time I see my words uh, actually being lifted, like right off the page or wow. just scenery or imagery or the point. Because if you're a good writer, you recognize your words right. wherever they are. Yeah. Wherever it they doesn't are. matter if you put a wig on them. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter if you change yeah. the races or, you know, you, you just recognize it. But I'm not interested in that. For me, my move is to always try to write the greatest novels that anybody who's, who loves reading and loves books have ever read. Got the it. freshest, most original material and keep it going. Would, would you consider adapting these uh, novels into movies or oh, yeah. TV series? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the option for The Coldest Winter Ever has been picked up, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be an independent film. Mm -hmm. So it's taken a, a, a lot of time to just put the money 
in the right place and, you know, to guard the creativity. Because I could just go into a Hollywood studio mm-hmm. and, you know, have them throw me some money and say, okay, it's ours now. Right. You're remember, out. I remember hearing yeah. Jada Pinkett Smith was going to be working with that, right? But that was a long time ago. Jada okay. and I shopped it and got a deal at HBO. Mm-hmm. And uh, HBO was planning on uh, turning it into an HBO film. And then after I wrote the script, the administration over at HBO changed. Ah, and when the administration damn. changed, yeah. a new guy said, oh, no, that's not my project. That's right. the old guy's project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You <laughs> get yeah. shelved. So I uh, had to go buy the script back and buy buy my rights back. You had to buy the script back? Hell yeah. What? Wow. House, house did money. They, did big they, did they big make, money. Did you have to buy it back for more than, they, that, than you sold it for? Or? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, well, Maybe a little bit more, but uh-huh. Not, uh-huh. not much. Not much. Sister Soldier is here. Moment of silence. Midnight three is the book. We got um Shanice on the line from Arizona. What's up, Shanice? Hey, Shanice. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> <to> Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shanice, get it together. Your phone is cl- uh, say something again. Let's do a, a phone check. Go ahead. Hey, okay. how you doing? Oh. Yeah, it's not gonna make Find it. Find her on Twitter. You on yeah. Twitter, right? So at Soul Job Books. Okay, she she will follow her, follow me at Soul Job. Her Books. comment was she loves the trilogy. Oh, that's great, what she great, said. Great. So she we couldn't hear it all. But uh, Andrew's on the line from Ontario. What's up, Andrew? What up, Drew? What's good? What's good? Hey, we got hyenas out in Canada too. Y'all got hyenas out there? <laughs> hyenas! <laughs> 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 that happens on Friday, soldier. We ain't want to scare the shit out of you. <laughs> soldier, like, what's happening? We are at war. And y'all going jungle on me? Yeah. <laughs> Back to the roots. Hey, 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 Andrew, what'd you like to say to Sister Soldier? Uh, first off, you know, I just want to say uh, to you guys, I love your radio show. I'm out here all the day, and and Sister Soldier, my goodness. Um, I mean, you're an amazing person, amazing author, an amazing uh, motivational speaker. Mm, um, thank you're, you. you made me fall in love with reading again with mm. the coldest winter. And I mean, um, when we talk about reading, how how important is reading, and how important is knowledge to our lives? And for you to to make me, you know, fall in love with reading again, you have no idea. I respect you and and uh, appreciate you so much. And you know what? Like you said, with creativity. Just keep it rolling, girl, because you're, you're killing it. Just keep it up. Very Thank happy. you very much. Uh, make sure you get the book, A Moment of Silence, Midnight 3. Okay, Andrew? Absolutely. Hey, Sway, by the way, I had to, I have to say this, man. Uh, on the weekend, I was watching the uh, the Steelers game, and, man, I'm a huge Steelers fan. It was like it was me versus you the whole game. <laughs> Talk to him, Andrew. <laughs> hey, Andrew, it was you versus me, and I thought about you, too, you know, because I really thought we were about to pull that one. The Oakland Raiders and the Steelers played this weekend, you know, I'm from Oakland. Right. So I got a lot of people who call me up and try to step on yeah. my neck because we got a good, <laughs> we got a decent season. Andrew's just one of them. He's doing it all the way from Canada, but you're a citizen, Andrew. I'll sway in the morning. See you next week, homie. You know, uh, I just want to say that, uh, you know, Canada has shown me such big love as a writer. Mm. You know, the book company, which mm-hmm. goes back to marketing, said, you know, well, we don't really want to invest in sending you to Canada because you don't really have any readers over there. Mm. Well, let me tell you something. I did a sister soldier and went over there anyway. Yeah. I got there. There were like 1,500, 2,000 people. They treated me like a rock star wow. over a book. Over a book. That's what's up. That was That's great. So I yeah. thought that was so wonderful. Was so I was. I walked into the room. I was shocked to see the size of the crowd. They all stood stood up on their feet and just gave me an ovation. Mm. And mm. ever since that day, I just get crazy love from Toronto mm-hmm. and you know all of the different Montreal, areas, areas. In, in Canada. So I just wanted to shout y'all out. That's uh-huh. awesome. They're gonna go crazy now. I know, but yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, I I love you. I love your work. No doubt. Uh, Thank continue. You success Thank and, you so much. and stay on the path and as long as we got a platform you have a place to be heard oh thank um, you um and congratulations all right and we got to break bread sometime because yep. you said we, <laughs> we 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 need to chat over a meal so let's oh, do that i'm so down for that because uh, we got deep history deep, deep roots yeah and we need i want to you know connect the dots okay you know I, I got a lot of questions i would love to ask you you know over that bread to some of the stuff i want to ask you on air Okay. Mm. Okay. That's um, cool. I'm I'm about to head out to Rome today, so oh, we'll have yeah. to make a safe flight. You safe know, flight. thank you. Stunt on sister. I stunted on sister soldier. She, she, she said safe flight. That's all right. I just got back from Switzerland, so I get. Oh, 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 that's why I 
why she just she rolled up. She said, safe flight. You know, I was over there walking Ooh. on the hills, getting my selfie shape ready for the re- new release. Okay. 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 Damn it, man. Damn, I, I, I got overstunned board. right there. Uh, thank you for coming through. We love you. Thank no you. Doubt. Okay, you Peace guys, everybody. make sure you get the book, no Sister doubt. Soldier, the book. Moment love of you, Silence. Love you, love you, love you. It's Sway in the Morning, only on Shea 45.